I'm Dan Burns, and we're celebrating Moon Day here at Pasco Scientific today. And I've got a question for you. If I drop this hammer and this feather at the same time, which one is going to hit the ground first? Now, you might think, hey, that is a really easy question, but it's not, especially to explain the results. Uh, first of all, we have to know where are we? And so if we're on Earth, then at least predicting the outcome is pretty easy. We know the hammer is going to hit the ground first. But why is that? Well, somebody might say, well, there's more air resistance on the feather, and so that's why it goes slower, and that's not correct. There's actually more air resistance on this hammer. It's going faster through the air and has a bigger cross-sectional area. It's the fact that the air resistance force on the feather is a larger fraction of the gravitational force on it. That's why it goes slower. If we go to the moon, then air resistance isn't a factor. And so we're going to go to the moon and try this out. Oh, our travel budget has been cut? Oh, well. Uh, it turns out we can do it uh, with the Pasco coin and feather tube. Now let's think about it before we try this out though. So why do heavier things and lighter things fall at the same rate when there's no air resistance? Well, when I'm holding this, I might be tempted to think the hammer is going to fall faster because gravity's pulling harder on it. And that's true. Gravity's pulling harder on the hammer by a fa factors of, of hundreds than on the feather. But what we forget about is the inertia. When I shake them back and forth, I feel that the hammer is harder to accelerate. And it turns out it's harder by the same factor that gravity is pulling more on it. So those two factors cancel out. More force, more inertia. Less force, less inertia. They would fall the same on the moon. So since our travel budget has been reduced, so the uh, moon trip is canceled, it turns out we can do this experiment here on Earth uh, if we can get rid of the air. And so I have the Pasco coin and feather tube. And so I have the feather we just used. The hammer doesn't fit, so we'll use the coin in its place. And if I seal it up, and invert it. You can see the feather, when the coin doesn't push on it, falls slower than the coin. And so what we're going to do is evacuate the air using this syringe pump. And I have a Pasco wireless pressure sensor hooked up to it. And we're reading the pressure there. And so about 100 kilopascals. But every time I pump, it goes down. It takes about 30 pumps. Okay, that wasn't that hard. Uh, if you do have a vacuum pump, you could use that and it works a little better. But this does work well enough. And so now I have the coin and feather. And if I invert it, they fall together every time. So it's not just the coin pushing on the feather. And so you can't take your students to the moon but you can at least show them what would happen if you have the Pasco coin and feather tube. They fall together. How about that? Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. 
And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Which proves that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. Uh, Jim, we copied uh, both solar wind and uh, penetrometer drum in the ETB. Not quite yet. I haven't put the solar wind in yet, but I will. <laughs> 